Yeah, most of them are afraid of you guys. They're afraid? Yeah, they're afraid to talk to you that all you're wanting to do is get information for them, on them. What type of information? Well, just like you, you won't give me your name, you won't give me your last name, you won't see me, you won't, you know, visit me in person, you know, which is actually breaking the law, 18.617. Or fe fe uh, uh, federal officers, federal uh, officials are supposed to disclose who they are by title and by badge and name. So, I mean, it's all kind of backwards, Chris. It's all kind of backwards. So, if you feel that, so you're telling me if people are afraid to talk to us, how, how can we overcome that? Well, maybe first you could come out and t look at us in the eye and person you could give us your real first name and your real last name and you could be a true representative of the people and that would start that would be a great start that'd be okay so you want to get more know more about myself and the people that are going to be involved in it no I think I think you know come out here and talk to us well I, I, we talk, I'll, I'll put that up to my, uh, my command so we're, we're working on developing some different plans to do that I mean, if you if you wanted to present that you guys were going to do a true um, official investigation of the Bureau of Land Management, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the, the U.S. Forest Service, and, and others, the EPA, and you wanted to come out and present to the people of how you're going to do this and how we, we should trust you in this action, then I'm certain that I can have the room full and uh, they will assist you in that. But I think it's going to take that personal touch of you guys actually not hiding behind the phones and hiding behind the guns and hiding behind the barricades. And then and when, you, when you do that, then they might actually have faith in you that you're, you're going to get it done and that you're going to protect them, not, not uh, harm them. <clears throat> I think they would look, they would trust you a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and then then they would feel like they could come out because they're wondering who who's the enemy, you know. Uh, and they're they're worried that if they side with somebody too quickly or the wrong, that it's going to hurt them. All right, sounds very good. Yeah, I was going to ask you something else. I'm looking at the, the redress of grievances. Yes. I want to make sure I'm looking at the, the, the right one, just so I, have, so I have some type of reference point. There's a couple I've seen. I've got one dated January 8th, from, uh, and that came out from Citizens for Constitutional Freedom. Would that be the most accurate? Um, well, the date on the original one would have been in December. Okay. I think I have that one that was posted online. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I have that one, and then I also have another one in January. Is there, just so I know I'm working on looking at the right ones for reference, is there going to be a difference between the two, or is there one, is there a better reference for me, or, or take them both independent? I actually would take them both independent. They both have good you know, concerns, um, but a lot of them are duplicated as well, so. I was looking at, I looked at the one yesterday from uh, Citizens for Constitutional Freedom, and in the, in the second request, um, they're talking, there was some, there's uh, information about misconduct by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Yes. And, now, uh, sorry. Go no, go, no, go ahead. Yeah, I'm looking at a part of it that there's uh, a concern with the U.S. Attorney's Office not providing 
discovery kit defense. Okay. Is that, is that part of it? Are you familiar with that part? Yeah, well, I mean, one piece of it is uh, the trial went on for eight days, and the prosecuting attorney presented for around six of those days, and the defense presented only one day. Um, and there was some decisions there that did not favor, you know, the Hammonds. And so, yeah, that certainly is a concern. I, I understand that part of it. Um, what I'm asking, what I'm looking at, though, there's a, there's a statement that there's a, there's, a, there's a witness that was interviewed, and the information for that witness was not provided to the defense. That is correct. That is correct. Has that, uh, has that information been uh, presented to the Hammonds attorney? Yes, and he will not work with us. Um, almost as if there's something deeper going on. Even at Susie Hammond's request, he still would not produce the documents that proved that Papagni gave him that information. Uh, almost as if there's a, a protection there of a you know of, of attorney protection. And that's one of the pieces that we intend on pressing much harder. Also could be one of the pieces, you know, that you guys press because that absolutely is a concern of ours, uh, a, a huge concern. That one is the evidence itself is incriminating to the Bureau of Land Management because it, he, it's two witnesses that saw them start the fires around the, around the Hammonds property when they blamed it on lightning. Second, that Papagni knew about it, knew about the witnesses, actually went to their homes and interviewed them, and then never ever were they contacted again. The witnesses were never contacted again. And uh, then we go digging into it, and the, uh, the Hammonds lawyers, you know, basically wouldn't disclose anything. Correct, one way or the other. And Susie Hammond requested that they disclose those things to us. <clears throat> has she got copies? Has she asked for disclose to her? Did they not disclose that to Susie? Uh, Susie uh, gave basically authority to her attorneys to disclose that to us. Um, that was done through a phone call. Uh, but so it was not done in written. <clears throat> but basically, Susie didn't want, you know, client privilege to keep him from disclosing that to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and so the the question is still there: Did Papagni disclose that information to the Hammonds attorney? Or not, and if he didn't, then there's a problem there. Of course, if he did, you know, then we are wondering why in the world would the Hammonds attorney not use that information? I mean, it's so pertinent. Pertinent. So, you know, yeah, just in that point alone, Chris, that's 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 a concern we have. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's one thing I looked at for you know, my, I'm not an attorney, but in you know, my experience working cases and discovery. Responsibility for for the, for us and uh, the for the prosecution. Uh, so that's something that I looked at that raised uh, that really caught my attention on this. It's something yeah, you know, I don't. It may be something they haven't had to look at an attorney or, or that's a better question for for a lawyer. But that would be. <coughs> I mean, that's something that's great, that's tangible, that's specific in there that can really be talked about pretty quick. So I wanted to, I would just wanted to ask some questions about that to see what else was known about that. Yeah, well, that's what I know. I did talk to the witness myself. I have his witness recorded on audio, and so you know that part is solid. Okay. <clears throat> I did talk to the Hammonds lawyer, and his name is Larry Manazar. And can I get a pen real quick, Hammond, so I know how to spell that? Sure. Larry, can you spell the last name for me? You know what? Let me. I got to spell it out myself. 
<coughs> it is just how you spell it. M A T A Z A R, Larry Matazar. M A T A Z A R. I am uncertain. I want to say Pendleton, but I'm not certain. It may be Bend. I really don't know where he's at. Absolutely. Yeah, that'll be fine. I uh, actually, eleven is probably okay again. Okay. Well, let's plan on talking again now for tomorrow. Um, all right. Tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks, Evan.